Today let's talk about everyone's favourite Chunky Primaris, with an overview of the Aggressor Squad in 9th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're talking Primaris Aggressors, and we'll have a look over their datasheet, talk about any obvious rules, combos and synergies, how I'd use them in game, and how they're faring compared with their counterparts. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So the Aggressor Squad is of course an elite's choice for Codex Space Marines, that'll cost you 40 or 45 points, and you get between 3 and 6 of them in a unit. They have a fairly typical Gravis Armoured Space Marine stat line, with movement 5, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 4, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 3 plus save. They're pretty tough defensively, and they have a decent number of attacks, though they can be a little slow perhaps. Each aggressor is equipped with Boltstorm Gauntlets or Flamestorm Gauntlets, and if you have Boltstorm Gauntlets then you must take a Fragstorm Grenade Launcher as well. The Flamestorms will cost you 40 points, and the Boltstorms and Fragstorm will cost you 45. In melee, either variant will have you attacking the same as a Power Fist, Strength 8, AP-3 and Damage 2, with minus 1 to your hit roll, and with 4 attacks per guy, they'll do some reasonable damage against pretty much anything. In terms of their range damage, the cheaper Flamestorms will give you 2d6 auto hits at 12 inches, so an average of 7, and it is quite nice to see that range boost compared with 8th edition, where like all flame weapons, they went up from 8 inches to 12. I think that has really helped them out, and made them a much more viable option. The two Bolt Storm Gauntlets will give you 2 Assault 3 weapons, so essentially 6 shots at 18 inch range, with strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1. On top of that, you get a further D6 shots from the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher, which in 9th edition did pick up the Blast keyword, which makes them slightly better against Hordes. We'll talk a little bit more about their various merits in just a second. Unfortunately, Aggressors really were given the short end of the stick in the translation from 8th edition to 9th edition. Previously, they had two very useful special rules. The first allowed them to advance and shoot assault weapons for no penalty, so getting very accurate shots with the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher and the Boltstorm Gauntlets. It now means that if they advance, then they're going to be suffering that minus one to hit penalty, just like anyone else. But by far the most important thing that they lost was their crazily powerful ability to double shoot if they were standing stationary. It did mean that they had absolutely ludicrous damage output, and I could see why they might have got rid of it, it's not the easiest thing to balance. In 8th edition it was really quite common to see a squad of 6 aggressors, firing twice with their bolt storm gauntlets and grenade launchers, and getting an average of well over 100 bolt shots into the enemy. There were quite a lot of chapters with rules that allowed you to shoot as if you were stationary as well, which meant that you could often move and double shoot them, such as the Ultramarines, who had it as part of their Science of Gilliman doctrine. Again, that's entirely gone now, and in my mind it has shifted them quite a lot from being a mainly shooting orientated unit, to being one that you have to get the most out of both the shooting and the melee to really get the value out of them. Now they just have Angels of Death for their combat doctrines, which is really useful on all that AP0 shooting, going to AP-1 is a big deal and also having Shock Assault for the extra attacks. Finally, in terms of keywords, they do have a ton of useful ones. They're Core Infantry, so can receive buffs a lot better than many other units, and that's one particular advantage that they have over Assault Centurions these days. They're also Primaris and Mark X Gravis Armor, both of which allow them to use other stratagems. Overall though, Aggressors are a fairly slow-moving, tanky Space Marine unit that will do decent damage to hordes at range, and decent damage to most things in melee. So let's talk about the advantages of either their Flamestorm Gauntlets or their Boltstorm ones then. They're really quite easy to compare, seeing as they put out the exact same damage output, Strength 4, AP 0, Damage 1 hits, and in terms of the average amount of hits that they get, it's actually fairly similar. You will get an average of 7 hits per Flamestorm Aggressor, or an average of around 6.3 hits per Boltstorm Aggressor, though it can depend how well you roll on that Fragstorm Grenade Launcher. Basically their range damage output is very similar, the main upgrade that you're getting for paying the extra 5 points is the extra 6 inch range. For me, I do think that they're both fairly usable at the moment, I think they've succeeded in making the trade-offs about equal for most cases, though there are some things that might want to push you one way or the other. For the Flamestorm Gauntlets, they do have the advantage of not caring about modifiers, including if you advance, so you might be able to advance with them a little bit more freely. They're naturally going to be very very strong with Salamanders, who can get multiple buffs to their Flamers, including plus 1 to wounds. And if your tactics with the aggressors did have a bit more emphasis on them being in melee, then these are going to be the more efficient choice. You basically have the same defensive profile and melee stat line, but they're more efficient at it, as they're not paying for additional shooting options. The Flamestorms don't have it all their way though, for that extra 5 points per model, 
having that extra 6 inch threat range is just really handy for being able to pick the ideal targets that you want, and it might easily make the difference whether or not you can shoot at all turn 1 as your aggressors move up the board. Though they will suffer any negative modifiers to hit, they do have the positive of being able to benefit from any rerolls to hit that characters might be able to give you. Flamestorm aggressors, for example, don't really care if you have reroll ones to hit from a captain, as they can't benefit from it in the first place. That blast rule on the grenade launcher is kind of helpful against big infantry squads, and will mean that they're particularly efficient against hordes. And you might further want to consider bolters a bit more if you're playing either Imperial or Crimson Fists, or if you're playing with a successor chapter that allows you to reroll ones with bolt weapons. Both of them might want to tip you into taking these over the flamestorm ones. Honestly though, I could happily run either unit, and it is kind of handy to see them fairly well balanced like this. So what synergies and combos can we use to get a bit more out of our aggressors on the table then? Firstly, some chapters tend to make a lot better use of them than others, and here are a few of my favourites. White Scars I think synergize particularly well with the aggressors, they'll get into combat a lot faster despite their slow movement, and if you are running them with bolters, they won't suffer any penalty to their hit for advancing and firing with them. They're basically a nice unit that you can just guilt free advance every single turn. Next we have Raven Guard, who I mainly like for their delivery options for the aggressors. They have a pre-game redeployment warlord trait, where you can set some aggressors up right next to your opponent if you have first turn, and then absolutely go to tower on them between close range bolt fire and power fist attacks before they even have a chance to strike back. They also can put aggressors in deep strike for one command point, which is another nice way of getting them up close and personal. We did already mention Salamanders with their affinity with Flamers, they get plus one to wound in their own tactical doctrine, and you can also have every single Flamer in the unit put out max shots, which is really quite powerful when you could have a unit doing 72 auto hits with Flamers. It could work quite well with Vulcan as well, to give them some rerolls to wound. Otherwise I'd say pretty much every chapter has at least some use with aggressors, Ultramarines can fall back and shoot, Iron Hands will have more durability, Imperial Fists can get extra shots and ignoring cover with their Bolters, Dark Angels could have some very tanky aggressors on the go, maybe marching them up with a 4 plus invul save from Azrael, and Black Templars, Space Wolves and Blood Angels will all give you some extra fight phase damage output, perhaps shifting their focus even more towards being a melee unit. Space Wolves in particular do very well with Power Fist like attacks, plus 1 to hit and exploding tixes are exactly what Power Fists would want. In terms of character support, aggressors really can be one of the good options to put in the centre of your army and make the most of multiple overlapping character buffs. Captain and Lieutenant rerolls are good, a good chaplain this knee is the plus one to wound for low strength shooting, it can mean all those bolt shots will have a decent chance of putting some wounds on even really tough targets, and with a large number of power fist attacks they're really quite a good target for a chapter master buff if you are running one. Rerolling all hits is really powerful when combined with power fist minus one to hit, as it again helps negate that weakness. As is often the case with elite infantry, an apothecary would be one of my favourite choices to buff the aggressor unit, a 6 plus feel no pain will help make them more durable, and you also have the potential for healing them and resurrecting them from the dead. Finally, ancients can be helpful for allowing them to shoot one weapon when they die, though I'll admit they're probably not the best choice, if they do get to shoot they'll only be shooting with one of their auto bolt storm gauntlets or flamestorm gauntlets, so aren't quite as good as some other choices. And finally, to provide them some cover, a librarian with Psychic Fortress isn't a bad shout either. The first characters I'd use first though are either ones giving rerolls, chaplain listeners, or the apothecary. In terms of stratagems, aggressors have quite a few decent options, including two very very good ones to increase their durability, unyielding in the face of the foe, which gives them plus one to their armor save against one damage weapons, and transhuman physiology for one CP which is one of the many reasons to run your aggressors in squads of 5 rather than squads of 6. If it is looking like these guys are going to get focused down, then these will typically give you some pretty decent return on your command point. Otherwise, there are a few more. or spec scan to intercept enemy units coming in close, putting them in strategic reserves to get close to the enemy, and also Gene Wrought Might, where you get exploding hits on 6s, which can give them just a little bit of an edge in melee if you do need every iota of damage output out of them. So how would I think about using aggressors in game then? Firstly, as I mentioned a second ago, I typically want to run them in fives. It allows you to use transhuman physiology for a little bit cheaper, gives them less coherency issues, and provides protection against blast. As I said before, I think that the choice between the flame storms and the bolt storms and frag storm is really quite close now, and I could happily be swayed one way or the other, depending on exactly what army I was playing. You then need to plan for getting them towards the enemy, whether you're starting them on the board, or starting in reserves or a transport vehicle. I haven't mentioned transport vehicles so far, mainly because I don't think that they're very necessary for aggressors, 
basically we just have the options of the repulsor or repulsor executioner and to be honest the amount of points that you'd invest in one of those compared with the aggressors means that the repulsor is actually going to be the main event most of the time and it probably just makes sense to move where it's best for that rather than trying to trundle it up the board to deliver aggressors into the fray. I'd say if you happen to have one in your army already it could be reasonable to hide them inside just to shield them from shooting for a turn but most of the time I'd be looking to get them out turn one. I wouldn't actually buy a repulsor or a repulsor executioner for the express purpose of transporting these guys up the board. If they're starting in the board, I typically want them fairly front and central, just so your opponent can't get away from them so fast. They are a bit more liable to being kited compared with other things, seeing as they're quite slow. And I'd certainly aim to make use of cover, whether that's light cover for plus one to saves, or being completely out of line of sight on the ground floor of a ruin. Their toughness isn't terrible, but you are investing a fair few more points in them than some of the other Astartes units, and if your opponent can shoot them early, then they're pretty much a prime target for being picked off as soon as possible. When moving up the board, I'd strongly consider advancing each turn. It might well get you in range with either the Flamers or the Bolters, or it just might be the more sensible option to give them the maximum chance of reaching an objective or making a charge on the next turn. I'd be aiming to stomp them up the board alongside any character support you might have, and when the enemy does start to target them down, I make good use of transhuman physiology or unyielding in the face of the foe to help keep them alive before they can make a charge on whatever they can reach. So how do they stack up against the other Space Marine options then? To be honest, for threatening units that are starting on the board, they do have quite a lot of competition in the Space Marine army. And when they lost their double shoot ability, I think the aggressors kind of went from a really standout unit to one that's a lot more on par with the other things that Space Marines have to offer. I would say that in more competitive lists, Space Marine players tend to be choosing things like Vanguard Veterans, Blade Guard, or Plasma Inceptors for their choices of threatening units that start on the board and bully their way to the midfield. I certainly wouldn't say aggressors are bad for this role, but with the price points of those guys, they really do kind of struggle to become the default option. They also have to compete against Terminators and Assault Centurions, the two other flavours of Space Marine that punch you hard with Power Fists and also spray out quite a lot of Bolt Shots. Compared with these, aggressors now do have very similar stats. Compared with Terminators, they put out a fair bit more firepower in terms of number of Bolt Shots on the target. They are a little bit easier to gun down than the Terminators point for point, unless you factor in Transhuman Physiology or Unyielding. The main advantage of the Terminators is the ability to deep strike, which the aggressors don't get for free, and can only do in certain circumstances, such as Death Watch or Raven Guard stratagems. Finally, Assault Centurions are pretty much the kings of the damage out of these three. If you can get them within 12 inch range with Hurricane Bolters and Flamers, they put out significantly more shots point for points than even the aggressors, and they're also significantly more dangerous in combat as well. Their main disadvantage is the durability, particularly they're a bit easier to take out with heavy anti-tank weapons as all of their points are quite concentrated in just a few big models. I'd strongly consider Assault Centurions over Aggressors if you were using strats like the Raven Guard one to deep strike them behind enemy lines and get all of that damage output in range. So overall I'd say Aggressors are a unit where you get what you pay for, reasonable durability, decent firepower and decent melee, but you do pay the points cost for those abilities. I'd say in the Space Marine army they're not really a wrong choice, but they're maybe just not as standout as other options compared with what they were when they could fire twice in 8th. In particular, they might well be a good choice if you are using a Space Marine army that spams a lot of Toughness 5, perhaps things like Bikes, Inceptors and other Gravis armour. So let me know what you think of these Power Fist boys in 9th edition, have they been performing well for you, or are the Plasma Inceptors and Blade Guard perhaps still in their thunder? If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where we'll certainly be trying to keep the 40k videos coming every single day. And if you have been enjoying regularly and you'd like to support the channel, I would just like to mention that I do have an Element Games affiliate link, which you can find down in the video description. Element Games is a discount retailer within the UK, they give 10-20% off Warhammer kits, and if you order anything through them after clicking that link, then a small amount goes to help support All Specs Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever can be a way to help support the channel if you were thinking about buying something anyway. For people in the USA and Canada, I do have a very similar Amazon link as well. Again, that works in pretty much the same way. Click on that and order just about anything, and a small amount goes to help support All Specs Tactics without costing you any more at all. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.